the H1B guy here. And today, the H1B guy news for the week ending December 1st, 2023. Today, I'll cover domestic visa renewals begin in January, a staffing firm lawsuit settlement, and no H1B lottery updates. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and like this video so that I can continue to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention that H1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. I help businesses and individuals solve complex work authorization issues in the recruitment process while bringing awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. If I can help you, please reach out. I'd love to hear how. And you can book an appointment directly with me via the h1bguy.com. Today's news is brought to you by Syndesis and Path to Canada, the ideal plan B for high school immigrants currently located in the U.S. whose status may be uncertain, by perm-ads.com, the industry leader in providing a seamless experience for employers and immigration attorneys navigating the complex perm recruitment app phase of the labor certification process, and by Mob Squad. Are you a technology professional facing U.S. work visa related challenges? Don't leave your fate up to chance. Our partner Mob Squad has a solution. Join the squad. Now, the news. On November 15th, 2023, the Office of Public Affairs, U.S. Department of Justice, in a press release titled, Justice Department secures over $900,000 agreement with National Staffing Agency to resolve claims of hiring discrimination. Quote, the Justice Department announced today that it has secured a settlement agreement with K-Force Inc., K-Force, a staffing agency with 36 offices across the United States. The agreement resolves the department's determination that K-Force violated the Immigration and Nationality Act, INA, by discriminating against non-U.S. citizens with permission to work in the United States and excluding them from job opportunities based on their citizenship status. Companies cannot unlawfully exclude people with permission to work in the United States from job opportunities because of their citizenship, Sanda said Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark of the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division. The Justice Department will continue to hold those accountable who engage in behavior that runs afoul of our nation's federal civil rights laws. The department's investigation determined that from at least March 1, 2019 to February 28, 2022, K-Force distributed job advertisements, contained unlawful hiring restrictions based on citizenship status, otherwise screened out candidates based on their citizenship status. These actions harm workers who have been granted asylum or refugee status and lawful permanent residents by unlawfully deterring them from applying for job advertisements and failing to meaningfully consider those who did apply. Under the terms of the settlement, K-Force will pay $690,000 in civil penalties to the United States and set aside $230,000 to compensate affected workers. This agreement also requires K-Force to train its personnel in the INA's requirements Revise its employment policies and be subject to departmental monitoring and reporting requirements. So, full disclosure I'm a former K Force employee of nearly five years, having worked there from 2007 to 2011. My time spent at K Force was invaluable to me, both personally and professionally. I went through extensive training and made lifelong friends, all while having the privilege to work with some of the best of the best in the staffing industry. With that being said, this news does come as a surprise to me. K-Force runs a very tight operation, so honestly, this appears to simply be an oversight. K-Force is also one of the top 25 H-1B employers in the U.S. with a very mature H-1B program. It's also where I took a fondness to understanding the intricacies of the H-1B visa. This suit, however, is targeted on job postings that are discriminating against individuals with Employment Authorization Document, EAD. And this really is one of those catch-22s because end clients of staffing firms are generally the ones mandating the restrictions. 
There's no doubt that job postings need to be more inclusive, but it's also a very fine line in meeting customer mandated job requirements, which many times include restrictions on specific work authorizations, making the job of recruiting agencies even more difficult as they navigate these uncertain times. On November 28, 2023, Julie Stuffed, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Visa Services, Bureau of Consular Affairs, in an in-person, on-record briefing titled 2023 Update on U.S. Visa Processing Worldwide, quote, We have a couple of other innovations that you might have heard me maybe talk about before that I want to highlight for you that we're doing in 2024. One is domestic renewal of visas. This is being run as a pilot starting next month and into the beginning of the calendar year 2024. What this means is that people who are living and working in the United States on a long-term work visa do not have to leave the United States to apply for their next visa or renew their visa. They would be able to send it to us here in Washington, have it renewed without leaving the country, and sent back to them in their own passport. This is a huge undertaking. We're very excited about it starting a small pilot of 20,000 visas in December, January, February, and we look forward to opening that to more categories of workers living in the United States in the rest of 2024. This is a very exciting program. We did do this in the past, and the last time we did it was about 20 years ago, and now we're ready to restart that. I've previously covered this during the H-1B Guy News, February 10th, 2023, and the H-1B Guy News, October 20th, 2023. Adding the domestic visa processing option doesn't require the Department of State to issue new regulations, and the reinstatement of the domestic visa renewal program will allow individuals on long-term work visas to renew their visas without Needing to leave the country. And that was quite a burden for a lot of individuals. The process now involves submitting the renewal application to the consular office in Washington, D.C., eliminating the need for applicants to return to their home countries for the renewal of their visa. The program starts with a modest pilot of 20,000 visas in December 2023, January 2024, and February 2024, with plans to expand more categories of workers through the rest of 2024. This December start comes slightly ahead of my prediction of the January to March timeframe. I know this has been discussed in depth by several other immigration pundits, but I just wanted to say it again. It's nice to see some common sense reform from the Biden administration as it relates to domestic visa renewals. In closing, two quick points. First, as of the recording of this post, there's been no official announcement from USCIS on a third H-1B lottery, and everyone that I'm communicating with hasn't heard anything either. The more time that goes by as we head into December, the lower the probability of a third lottery occurring becomes. However, since I've decided to put this update into existence, notifications will probably have already gone out. As a reminder, I've been wrong the last two years on the occurrence of additional H-1B lottery selections, so take this for what you will. Second, H.R. 6542, Immigration Visa Efficiency and Security Act, was introduced on Friday, December 1st in a bipartisan effort. Plan to review the full text and provide more context during next week's news. But for now, another standalone piece of immigration legislation has been unveiled. For the full post on the H-1B Guy News for the week ending December 1st, 2023, please check out the h1bguy.com. And a reminder that today's post was brought to you by Syndesis and Path to Canada, the ideal plan B for high school immigrants currently located in the U.S. whose status may be uncertain. If you're facing an H-1B denial or OPT expiration, don't get caught off guard. Make sure you have a plan B and Syndesis and Path to Canada are your answers. They'll gladly help you navigate the process. And if you'd like to find out if you qualify, Please be sure to use the link in the video description below and someone from Sedesis or Path to Canada will be in touch. By perm-ads.com, 
the industry leader and providing a seamless experience for employers and immigration attorneys navigating the complex program recruitment ad phase of the labor certification process. If you're looking to reduce your costs and overhead associated with perm labor certification recruitment advertising, let perm-ads.com help you. And by Mob Squad. Are you a technology professional facing U.S. work visa-related challenges? Don't leave your fate up to chance. Our partner, Mob Squad, has a solution. Mob Squad helps technology professionals facing U.S. work visa-related uncertainty remain working with their current U.S. employer near shore from Canada, as well as technology professionals from around the world who are seeking to find a rewarding opportunity in North America. Through their partnership with the Canadian government, they can obtain a Canadian work permit for you and your spouse in as little as four to six weeks. So whether you're looking to stay working with your current U.S. employer or you want to find a new opportunity in Canada, please find out how the team at Mob Squad can help you via the link in the video description below. Join the squad. Just wanted to ask you again to please like this video, subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube, and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post new content here to this channel. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate your support. The H-1B Guy, your global source for all things H-1B.